As you know, yesterday, uh, the Premier, Doug Ford, made some an announcement that um, the, the lockdown measures are, are going to be much more strict. How is that going to affect us in the church? We don't really know as of yet. Our Cardinal, Cardinal uh, Thomas, is trying to negotiate with the government officials to hopefully allow us to continue at least to have prayer times and, and maybe communion services, but uh, he's not sure yet, so he's, he's negotiating with them, and we will hear word today, so you can check our website or check the Archdiocesan website later today to find out what, what the, the ruling will be regarding our situation. So pray for the Cardinal. He is determined to try to keep the churches open, and of course he has to you know, uh, consider many factors and it's it's not an easy position to be in. So he wants what is best for us and at the same time he's trying to cooperate with the government officials also. Just a reminder, his birthday is this Saturday the 16th and um, you're encouraged to offer a spiritual bouquet for him, offering up rosaries or spiritual communions or whatever you think, uh, just so that he will be a good archbishop, that he will do the right things uh, pertaining to the running of this archdiocese. You can go to our parish website if you wanted to, uh, you know, make an offering of a spiritual bouquet so that it can be presented to him by the Sarah Club. So one of our parishioners is involved in that. In regards to today's gospel reading, notice how it mentions that our Lord was uh, at the home of Simon and Andrew, and there were many people who came to, to him, people who were sick, possessed with demons, and, and basically Jesus was healing all of them or delivering them from the evil spirits. So in other words, Jesus was swamped with people coming to him. So he probably was up very late, but it mentions that in the morning while it was still very, very dark. So in other words, very early in the morning, he got up and went to a deserted place and there he prayed. And we know that in various uh, other passages in the scripture, it mentions that sometimes he spent entire nights in prayer. And so our Lord is trying to emphasize to us the importance of prayer. Now, Jesus is God. He you know, he doesn't need to pray the way we need to pray, but nevertheless, he does pray. So in his human nature, he still needs to be nourished by the presence of God. So he, he well, he, he is God, yes, but he, he has to connect with the Father. So our prayer life is really about love and, and connection. So as human beings, we are social beings and we need to connect. It's very, very important that we do that. So the, he gives us an example. Now, many people, you know, they don't like the idea of waking up early in the morning. And some people, they're so busy, they, they don't have time for prayer. And, and very often when they want to incorporate more prayer time into their lives, one of the things that they will do is set their alarm earlier, wake up earlier, and spend some time in prayer. And sometimes that's the only way they can get it done. So that's actually a good thing to do. Now... I think it's true to say that for most of us, we don't like to wake up right away in the morning. I think maybe young children, when they wake up, they're kind of eager to get out of bed. Uh, they're eager to experience the world. Everything is new for them. But for many people, sometimes it's because they're deprived of sleep, but they don't want to get out of bed. And I think that's especially true in the winter time when perhaps it's colder in your room and nobody wants to get out from under the warm covers. But it is actually very good for us to wake up right away as soon as our alarm goes off, not to hit the snooze button. In fact, a priest friend of mine said that the snooze button is one of the worst inventions ever because it's actually bad for you to hit the snooze button and to fall back to sleep for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. You start your sleep cycle, but it's not complete, so you're going to be more groggy throughout the day. So the ideal is to wake up when you're supposed to wake up. And doing that, some saints refer to that as a heroic act, because it's, they understand that it's difficult to do. But that kind of sets the tone for the whole day. So if you get up on time, 
you're able to get ready on time and everything just falls into place and, and you, you, you become more efficient throughout the day. When people hit the snooze button, when they're kind of dragging their feet, not getting up right away, then they're behind the entire day. They're, they're, they're kind of dragging their feet the entire day. So it's, it's not good. So the ideal is to wake up right away. Now, here's a very interesting fact. When it comes time to wake up, a lot of people don't want to wake up. In other words, they want to sleep more. They want to sleep longer. But when it comes time to going to bed in the evening, they don't want to go to bed. They don't want to sleep. They want to stay awake. They want to keep looking at their internet or social media or watching movies or whatever it may be, but they don't want to go to sleep. Or they delay going to sleep. Now, there might be different reasons. Sometimes people are so busy, they get to bed very late, they're working very hard. That's understandable. But sometimes people just stay up because they're interested, they're doing website searches or whatever, they're just interested in gaining knowledge or whatever. Other people, as I mentioned, it's entertainment or social media. They don't like the idea of going to bed. They, they want to hold on to the present moment. They want to learn more information. They want to socialize more. So wh why is this, this contradictory attitude? At night, we don't want to go to bed. We don't want to sleep. But in the morning, we want to sleep more. So of course, it's different parts of our nature that are desiring these things. So in the morning, our, our body desires more sleep. Our mind is still very groggy, so we're not as alert, we're not as interested, perhaps in doing research or whatever it may be. And it's true, our body needs a certain amount of rest. So if we're not getting enough rest, the ideal is to go to bed earlier, not to sleep longer, to go to bed earlier. Why is it that we want to stay awake at night? Well, it's partially because we need to be fulfilled socially, but also intellectually, spiritually. So that's part one of the reasons why we do all these searches or, or you know, we, we want to find out more information or we want to connect with people. And it's good for us to connect with people. And what we ought to take away from this is that we need to be prudent with how we spend our times. It is important for us to connect with people to gain certain information, but make sure it's the right information, especially information that's going to benefit you spiritually, because that is the most important thing. Your eternity depends upon that. And if we have the, the wisdom of God with us for every decision that we make in life, it will be, we will be guided by God's wisdom, and, and so we will benefit by that. In regards to socializing and connecting with people, it is very important. And I think we realize that more so now during this pandemic, during this lockdown. But the most important person that we need to connect with is God. So we, we need to connect with God. We need to, to nourish our spirituality through our life of prayer. And when we pray, we feel fulfilled so that we can go to bed feeling fulfilled. A lot of people go to bed feeling unfulfilled because they haven't done the things they were supposed to. They haven't really connected with people the way that they would like to. And the reality is they probably haven't connected with God as they ought to. So if you want to be fulfilled, connect with God. Pray. Pray before going to bed. Go to bed on time and ideally wake up on time so you can do the things that you need to do including your prayers. And when we pray, we are more fulfilled. God guides us. God protects us. It's, it's just a wonderful thing. So our Lord teaches us that we should be even willing to deny ourselves sleep in order to connect with God. It's the most important thing. And we can do it anywhere, in the privacy of your home. And uh, you don't necessarily have to come to church. If you can, you, it's, it's wonderful. You can come for adoration. But even if, if we are totally locked down, you can still connect with God through prayer.